In this video on C Sharp Basics, let's take a look at inheritance. So inheritance is basing one type or class on another type, allowing us to reuse pre-written code. This follows something called the dry principle or don't repeat yourself. Rather than copying and pasting your code from other places, it's better to keep track of the lineage of where that code comes from. You do this through inheritance. So let's say that we have a class, this my class, which we've changed a little bit, and we want to create another class that uses the same identical members, a total, a constructor, and add two integers. So when we inherit my other class from my class, we say that my other class is a type of my class. And now all of the members that are on the my class class exist inside of the my other class without having to retype out each member and how it behaves. Let's take a look at this in code so we can also see the syntax of how to create an inheritance. Here is the my class class and I've taken out all of the commented out sections. Now I'm going to go ahead and go into the inheritance folder and I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to call this my addition class and we'll save it. Now the syntax for inheritance is pretty straightforward. On the signature of your class up here, we're going to put a colon. Notice that this is not a semicolon, this is a colon. Then after the colon, you're going to type out the name of the class that you want to inherit from. So in this case, it's my class. Now for base classes that have default constructors that don't require any sort of parameters, this would be all that you need to do. However, in our circumstance, there is a slight problem. And if I hover the mouse over this red squiggly line for IntelliSense, we can see that the problem is that there is no argument given that corresponds to the required formal parameters value one of my class, my class. This is because the my class method which is the class constructor of my class, requires two parameters, both of type int and int, as we can see here. So since the class constructor for my class requires two parameters, we need to do the same thing here for my addition class. So we're gonna type out CTOR to declare the constructor for my addition class. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go up here and define a couple of int parameters, value one. Actually, let's go ahead and call these lowercase, value one and int value two. Now I need to pass these along to the base class called my class. So to do that, I'm once again on the signature of the constructor now, I'm going to add the colon, and then there's a keyword of base. And the base keyword refers back to the base class, which in this case would be my class. Now in the base class, in the base constructor of the base class, we can pass along the two parameters. So that would be value one and value two. So now when the user instantiates my addition class, they're going to need to pass in value one and value two for parameters and those values will be passed right back into the base class constructor. Let's go ahead and save this, and now let's use this new my addition class. So I'm gonna to go to the program class. So let's go ahead and change from my class to my addition class for both the data type that we're specifying for the object, as well as the class object that we are instantiating. You can see that the compiler likes this. There's nothing wrong with doing this. And if we go ahead and run the application, we should get the same result that we would expect if we were running the original my class. Sure enough, the behavior of the my additional class is the same as the original my class. It added five plus seven and then resulted in 12, which was outlined, uh, outputted here in our console.write line. Now there's one additional component to inheritance that I'd like to point out. I can take this my object object and instead of defining it as a data type of my addition class, 
since the my addition class inherits from my class, I can actually base this my object object on my class. This is starting to touch on that third pillar of object oriented programming called polymorphism, which we'll discuss about in the next video.